Amen. 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 God is awesome. Yes. What a wonderful God we serve. God has given us another gift, and that is the day that we can save God. Woke, woke us up, uh, started us on our way, put breath in our lungs, and we can come to worship him and say, thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. I want to say thank you for all who participated in leading us in worship. Thank uh, Brother White for that prayer for my Aunt Sheila. My Aunt Sheila is not a member of Liberty City, but she is on, she's our online member. Amen. So she, she worships with us online, and uh, I know for a while she was saying she couldn't get on. She was getting a little upset. Y'all. So she is a, one of our distant members, our satellite members. But she, um, my Aunt Sheila was in a very bad car wreck, and so she's, uh, She's uh, in the hospital, so we'll we'll check on her to see what her status is. We want us to say that you continue to pray for uh, Clinton, uh, uh, Quentin, and uh, his family as you know he still mourns the passing of his mother. And so that's not easy because you only get one mama, and so uh, we want to uh, pray for him. Pray for all. There are others, many others who've had. Uh, to undergo and, under, and deal with the passing of a loved one. And so uh, whether it be a mama or a spouse, uh, some way, shape or form, they've had to deal with someone losing uh, a person in their life that they love. So let's keep them lifted up in prayer. Let's continue to strengthen them uh, as we know God can. Now, if you don't mind, let's stand quickly for the reading of the word. I just have... Uh, a couple of verses to read, y'all. Just a couple of verses to read. Actually, I just have, I just have one verse. Oh, this is the pattern, the only one. So I better say amen early, man. <laughs> I only have one verse, y'all. <laughs> Look at verse six, Hebrews chapter eleven, verse six. And I see some of y'all are here. And I want to say welcome to our visitors who are visiting with us. Uh, God bless you because uh, we are humbled that you're worshiping with us. We know that you could have chosen any place else to go and worship. So Amen. we want to say thank you for being with us on our casual Sunday. I see old Fred Wright over there. Fred Wright got into the casual Sunday uh, kick, y'all. No, no, y'all. He, he had his suit on without a tie, but but you got to see what he's wearing. He, he got his Jordans on, y'all. So. Uh, <laughs> Y'all ain't got Fred right in the spirit, man. Oh, we in trouble now. We, we rocking his Jordans. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number six. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to talk to you, I, we're actually, today we'll start a series of lessons on the power of expectant faith. Amen. The power of expectant faith. It's one thing to have faith, there's another thing to expect something to happen as a result of your faith. Uh, I would suggest to you that when the Bible speaks of expectation, the word that's often used is hope. And so when the Bible speaks of hope, he is speaking, uh, it, it speaks to the fact that Christians are not wishing for something to happen. That the child of God is expecting something to happen. Oh, y'all, y'all got to work, y'all, boy. Oh. Y'all gonna make me work hard this morning already, Edgar. If the child of God does not wish for something to happen by faith, the child of God is not dependent on luck or chance for something to happen. The child of God, true children of God, who operate by faith, you expect something to happen. That's hope. Hope is a a, a, an expectation an anticipation that God is going to do everything he promised that's hope, that's expectation now I need to also suggest to you that hope 
and faith go together. You can't separate the two. So to say that I have faith and not hope is a misnomer. You must have faith. So the child of God who operates their life by faith, that presupposes you also have something you are hoping for. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Well, the Hebrew writer will say will show us that the whole book of Hebrew, honestly, is really a book of faith. It is a book that challenges the child of God who had been going through, or those Christians who had been going through severe and terrible persecution. He, he urges them to stay committed to their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by a life of committed faith. I need you to understand that for the child of God, even today, a life of faith is not simply an act of faith, but for the child of God, faith is a way of life. Yeah. And so the Hebrew writer will show that I need to build your strength, your faith in Christ. But I'm going to show you by, he says, I'll start out in chapter 1 by showing you that God spoke in sundry times and in divers manners in many ways, but he has in this last day spoken now through his son. He no longer speaks to the prophets, through the prophets. And so what he wants them to see is that the person you need to pay attention to is Jesus. Yeah. The person that's going to strengthen your faith is Jesus. The person that's going to keep you committed by faith is Jesus. Jesus is greater than the prophets. Jesus is greater than the angels. For he will say also in that chapter that uh, God said, did not say to his angels, sit here on thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. That wasn't given to angels. It was given to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he says, so Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus is greater than the prophets. Jesus, by the time you get to chapter 3 and 4, he will show that Jesus is greater than Moses and Aaron because Moses was faithful in his house. But Jesus as a son was faithful over his house. And he will show Jesus is greater than the prophets. Jesus is greater than Moses. Jesus is greater than Aaron. Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus then is qualified to be our great high priest. You can call on him when you need him. You can He intercedes for you before you call on him. Jesus is our high priest. And he will show that not only is he our high priest, but he's the kind of high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He says Jesus, not only is he greater than the prophets, greater than Moses, greater than Aaron, greater than the angels, but Jesus also has ushered in a better covenant. Jesus is better. So every way about Jesus, everything about Jesus is better than the old law. Are y'all with me? So he says, I want you to get that in your faith walk because it, nothing else will strengthen you. Nothing else will encourage you. Nothing else will cement your faith like Jesus Christ. And so now he will, he will show by the time we get to chapter 11, he's going to show us that there are some people in chapter 11 that I want you to pay attention to as examples of who live by faith. He uses a literary device that was common during ancient times where the author would often use a litany of people, a list of people, uh, Jewish people, that, that the reader could read about that would uh, encourage them to live a life of faith. In the four Maccabees, the author would write in such a way that he would give a list of Jewish people that they could read and say, hey, there are people there that lived by faith before I did, and what they went through, they endured it by faith, so can I. Uh, so then there was a man named Sin Ben Sirah, uh, who, who was a Jewish historian who also wrote in a way that uh, the Jews would read and they would understand that by this list of people who live by faith, it encourages us who read it to live by faith. Well, the Hebrew writer takes a note from that literary device and he also does the same thing. He will start to talk about a man named Abraham. He will talk about a man named Noah. He will talk about a man named Enoch. He will talk about a man named Samson. He will speak about a woman named Abba Sarah. He will give a litany, a list of people 
Jewish people that they could fact check by their own history to see that these people live by faith. Well, I need you to also understand that when you read this letter, when you read this great book, you need to understand that this isn't just a story for you to, to go away feeling good about. This is written so that all of us will live a life of expectant faith. Some of us came in here this morning and hope expecting God to speak to you. I hope that when you came to worship, you expect God to talk to you and to give you wisdom, clarity, and guidance on what your next move needs to be. I hope that when you came to worship, you came to experience God. And you came to get a relationship with God and or you came to stay connected to God. Well, all of it is contingent upon how strong your faith is. Amen. Are y'all with me? Watch him now. So then chapter 11, verse, well, before we get to chapter 11, he's going to give them a warning, right? Not necessarily a warning, but a, a subtle way of encouraging them to keep and maintain their faith. Now notice in chapter 38, now verse 32, he will talk about uh, the, the conflict that they will endure. Uh, the, the persecution and the suffering they will endure. And then after that, he will get to verse 38 and he will, well, verse 30, the end of verse 37, he will say, he who is coming will come and will not delay. He's talking about Jesus. Then he will say, but my righteous one shall live by faith. That's, a, that's another a echo of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, where Habakkuk said, the righteous, God's people, will live by faith faith, which means even in the old, under the old covenant, or as we know it as to be the new Old Testament, God's people in the days of old lived by faith. Those in the first century under the new covenant lived by faith. And might I suggest to you, those of us right now living in the 21st century, God expects us to live by faith. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, in chapter, uh, uh, so he, well, he says, the righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the pers uh, persevering of the soul. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He says, we aren't the kind of Christians that shrink back. We aren't the kind of Christians that when we're going through trials and tribulations that we turn coat and turn the other side or we run back into our old way of life or we hide and we conceal that we are true Christians. He says, no, we are the kind of Christians that don't shrink back, but we are the kind of Christians who now live by faith, which is the substance, the bedrock, the foundation of who you are. Yeah. Watch it. He says, now faith is the substance. Uh-huh. Faith is the substance or the assurance of things hoped for. Do you see that? Now, when he says the thing faith is, now faith, belief, conviction, trust, right? Um, yeah, but he uses faith not as a definition, but he wants to use faith here as a character witness. He'll say the, the character of faith is one substance. It's the groundbreaking. It's the foundation of what though? Your hope. The thing you hope for. He says, so what you're hoping for, a, which is a expectation that God will do all of what God promised. He says, what God promised, what you're hoping for, is all contingent on the foundation of your faith. Yeah. He says, now faith is the substance, but that is not all in the way that he uses the word. Faith is the hypostasis of your hope. Now, when he says hope, hope, statement, stasis, it can also mean faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Well, he also uses it in the sense of one who is a patron. Uh, uh, and that patron had a client 
that client would rely, if that client had a need or that needed to be met, or if that client was promised a gift by the patron, then the patron would promise the gift, he would promise assistance, he would promise help to the client. Watch this. And the client's faith or trust in the patron was just like a title deed that gave him uh, authority, access, right? And and uh, what's the word? What's the word when you have a title deed? Um, ownership of property. He uses faith as a title deed, as ownership of property. He uses faith. Now, he says faith is the assurance. It's the title deed of things hoped for. What am I hoping for? Whatever God promised. Who? Whatever God promised means it is assured to me. It becomes a reality to, a reality to me. Why? Because I have the title deed to it. Y'all still ain't caught up with me. Sister Hazel, what God promised you, you have as a reality. Why? You got the title deed. If you've got the title deed, you have ownership. Y'all still ain't catching me. I'm going to help you. Jesus says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. And there you will be with me. Fred, have you seen the mansion? No. Can you put your finger on the mansion? No. Uh, how do we do? What is the color of the mansion? Don't know. Don't care. What I do know is I have it already because I got the title deed. Oh, y'all still ain't catching me. This size, you ain't caught me. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter three, uh, 1, he says, God has given us an inheritance that's kept, reserved, is undefiled. It cannot fade away and is reserved in heaven. Well, Fred, have you seen the inheritance? No. Have, can you put your hand on it? No. Well, how do you know God's going to give it to you? Because I got the title deed. Y'all still ain't catching me. Oh, my goodness. Listen, listen. It was, it was, who was it? It was Job who said, Lord, uh, yet though he slay me, I'll trust him. Why could he trust God even though he had lost everything, even though his world was crumbling around him? Because he had the title deed of faith that God would give him double in the end. Y'all, y'all hear me? Life may not be where you want it to be. It may not look the pretty as you would like it to be. It may not have everything all dotted and crossed. It may not have all of your ducks in a row. But one thing about it, I can stay committed by faith to my God because I know that everything he promised, I've got the title deed for it. Y'all still ain't catching me. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Well, Fred, have you gotten the airship yet? No. Have you seen the airship yet? No. But how do you know you're going to get it? Because I got the title deed. I still ain't, y'all still ain't working with me. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I what? Kept the faith. Henceforth, there is a what? Crown laid up for me. Well, Fred, have you seen the crown? No. How, have we, are, are you sure you're going to receive it? Yeah. yeah. How do you know, Fred? Because I'm going to walk around by faith like I'm already wearing that crown. Listen, God expects us to be a people of expecting faith. Are oh, y'all hear me? Y'all made me work real hard. I'm tired now. Oh, I have to let you know we got the power with us. Watch this. That means that means faith then, point number one, faith is our foundation. That's it. And if faith is our foundation, here's a sub point, that we must have unfaltering trust in God. That's it. Got you it. hear what I'm saying? Unfaltering, unwavering faith, trust in your God. Then the other thing is, I can have this kind of faith in God because I know God's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
get for me. Get me for free. Hey, sit, rip, rip, sit there. You want to read a little bit? I don't mind. Get, get me. I don't know if this projector is going to act right for me. You got your mic? Get, 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 get Hebrews chapter 6. Get Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse number 12. See Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 12. What does the Bible say? Hebrews chapter 6. Uh huh. Verse number 12. Yeah, yeah. Be not sluggish, but imitators of them who by faith and patience inherit the promise. Inherit now, did the you? Promise. Yeah, yeah. Now, wait, wait, wait. It's by faith and patience. Let me tell you, whenever you read the Bible, when often the Bible writer talks about faith, he always couples it with the word hope. Yeah. So now he says, faith and patience to inherit the promise. That's your hope. Whatever God promised, you're putting faith in what God promised, he's going to make good on it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Right. Look, ain't no, ain't no point in praying to God about your problems, about your situation, if you don't have faith to believe God can make it happen for you. Right. Right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. So he says, he says, yeah, for, pay, for, for faith and patience, we inherit the promise. What else? For when God made promises. When God made promises. To Abraham. Yeah. Since he would swear by none greater. He swore by none. Now what we're going to find is God's character. God made promise to Abraham. And he swore the one by nobody else. Why? Because there was nobody greater than God. No one who had the kind of integrity that God had. No one who had the kind of character that God had. That he could use to swear by what he promised. Watch it, watch it. He swear by himself. He swore by himself. Go ahead. Saying, surely at blessings I will bless thee. Yeah. And multiply. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. What else? And thus having patience endured, he attained the promise. Wait, 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 wait. So Abraham patiently waited on what God promised. But he would not have waited unless he had the kind of faith that was expecting God to deliver what he promised. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I know that's right because by the time you get to Genesis chapter 21, right around verse number 4, the Bible said when Isaac was born to him, Abraham was 100 years old. Are y'all hearing me? So I know it took faith. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. What else? You see, what else? Sixteen. For men swear by the greater. Men swear by the greater. And it is every dispute of their oath yeah. is final for confirmation. Uh huh. I put an oath on whatever I say, right? And now y'all know I make jokes about this from time to time, but you know we say that we actually use that in our own vernacular. Yeah. Look, we, we say, look, I put, I put, I put my, yeah. I put my life on it. Yeah. You're like, right? It's I own it now. Now, oh, no, I'm. I'm but some people, some people when they're telling stuff, when they're saying stuff to you, they say, on God, on God. Y'all yeah. hear people say that? On God. And some of them be lying. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on. Y'all hear with me. God be minded to show more abundantly. Unto God you. wanted to show the abundance of his promise to the heir. The heirs would be us. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Of the promise, the, yeah. the immutable. His immutable, that, that big word simply means unchangeable, right. all right? Of his counsel. Of his, in other words, what God promised y'all, he ain't going to change. That's right. I do you what better. Whatever God promised, he can't change because what he promised is always in line with his character. That's right. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? So it's immutable, it's unchangeable, it won't change, it can't change. Watch this, what, what else? In, interposed with an oath. Yeah. That by two immutable things. Two, in, which is his promise in the oath. In which is impossible. It's impossible for God to do what, Sidney? God to lie. It's impossible for him to do what? For God to lie. It's impossible for God to lie. So if it's impossible for God to lie, then it just makes good spiritual sense that I need to have a faith that ex expects that God, whatever he said, whatever he promised, he'll make good on it because he can't lie. Amen. I can trust him in every way 
space, a form or fashion. That's right. Because he can't lie. Yes. Y'all got me? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm wrong. Well, yes. that's God's character. Mm -hmm. Look at Hebrews 6. Stay there. Stay, stay. Look at Hebrews. Come over to Hebrews chapter. I think it's Hebrews chapter 7. Uh, uh, 4. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. And then we'll get to Hebrews chapter 7. I want to show you the character why your faith must be unwavering. Because of the character of God, I need you to look at the character of Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 14, Sid. Verse 14? Yeah. And it says here, verse 14, having been a great high priest. Yeah, and having been being a, a, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. He's passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Yeah. Let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast our profession. Uh huh. For we have not a high priest. We have not a high priest who what? Cannot be touched. Who cannot. So just like our Father cannot lie, we've got a high priest in Jesus who cannot. Not an issue you go through doesn't touch our Savior's heart. That's right. He says, he says, you cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. What else? Of our infirmities. Yeah. But one that has been in all points tempted. As we are. We are, yet without sin. So that means you can put your trust in him. Yeah. Right. That means my faith must be trusting in a savior who's been where I've been and he's accomplished it all without sin. Without sin. Go to chapter 7. Y'all got a minute? Go look at chapter 7, verse 25. Real quick, see Chapter 7, verse 25. What does it say? And the scripture says here, Wherefore also he is able to save. Wait, 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 wait. Back up, back up, see Back up to chapter. Say in chapter 7. Oh, man. Back up to uh, chapter 19. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. Yeah, yeah. I mean, verse 19. Verse 19, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Ver so are y'all paying attention, huh? <laughs> Verse 19. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, I know, right? <laughs> the law made nothing perfect. The law made nothing perfect. And a bring in the era of a hope, of a better hope. A better hope, yeah. Through which we draw nigh unto God. We draw nigh to God because we got a better hope. That's right. Now watch it, watch it. It is in, in as much as it is not without the taking of an oath. Uh huh. For there indeed have been made priests without an oath. Yeah. But he with an oath by him that says of him, What did he say? The Lord swear and will not repent of sin. Uh huh. Thou art a priest. Yeah, now you're talking about Jesus. That's he right. says, God swore with an oath. He put an oath on Jesus' priesthood. That's right. And he said, Jesus' priesthood will not change. That's right. Watch it, watch it. What else is it? My soul, my my soul also has Jesus become the sure better of a, of a better covenant. Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Watch it, watch it. What else? And they indeed uh -huh. have been made priests, made yeah. in numbers. Yeah. Because by that, by death, they are hindered. And, in other sin. words, the Levitical priesthood, they were human, they died, they needed a right. successor, right? Exactly right? Jesus lives forever. That's right. Doesn't need a successor, right? He's he's forever our high priest. What else? But he because because he abideth forever, uh -huh. has his priesthood, his priesthood unchangeable. Yeah. What else? Wherefore also he is able to save oh, to the oh, uttermost oh, them wait a that draw near. Hold oh, up, Sid. You read that too fast, man. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. So Jesus is forever our high priest. That's right. And he will always remain our high priest because God swore him in with his own oath. That's right. That's right. But then he's going to say, and because Jesus is our high priest, here's why I can put complete trust in him. Because he's able to save us to the uttermost. <laughs> oh, that should have got y'all some shouts, man. Yeah. To them that draw near. Because a lot of us needed some saving. Y'all yeah. right. yeah. playing with me. You didn't just need to be saved. You needed a lot of saving. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? And he says, because you needed a lot of saving, Jesus, as a high priest, is the only one who can save you to the utmost. He goes beyond the word complete, and he says the uttermost. To them that draw near. Now, now to them who draw near. See the faith in that? That's 
Right. You, you ain't drawing near to a high priest who can save you to the utmost without faith. Right. Yeah. That makes sense? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says he can save you. That's good, Sid. He can say, come back to chapter 11. He can save you to the utmost. So now he says, so faith is the substance, the hypostasis. It is the grounds of found, uh, and foundation. Watch this. It's the grounds and foundation of unseen reality. Yeah. <laughs> it's the faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Watch this. The evidence is the proof of what you can't see. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you walk by faith and not by faith. So every child of God that fails to walk by faith, if you operate only by what you can physically see, you're actually operating blind. It is. It is. He says, so you, you walk, he says, so this faith is the evidence, it's the proof mm -hmm. of what you can't see. You can't see. Oh, that, that's us. Just the ball, we operate with a faith that that actually produces evidence, real-time evidence of what we can't see. He's going to get to it in a minute about God's creation of the world. That when you look at the world, you actually see through your faith lenses that which is invisible. That's right. Oh, oh, that's why Abraham had a faith in Romans chapter 4. That's why Paul was saying Abraham had hope against hope. That's right. Y'all ain't read that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, y'all too late. Turn to Romans chapter 4. Go to Romans chapter 4. Y'all believe it. He had hope against hope. In other words, y'all, he had the kind of faith that had hope against a hopeless situation. When all the odds were stacked against him, as a matter of fact, listen, this kind of faith that we're talking about will always contradict your situation you're going through. Amen. Y'all yeah. yeah, didn't catch that. Well, very good. good. Look at verse 17, Sid. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. What, what does it say, Sid? As it is written. As it is written. A father of many nations yeah. stand by me. Talking about Abraham. Uh -huh. Before him who he believed, even God, who giveth life to the dead. Wait, wait, wait. So he believed God. Abraham believed God who gives life to the dead. That's right. Mm -hmm. And calls the things that are not. As though they were. Though That's they were. faith, y'all. That's right. Faith operates seeing what you can't see. Faith, y'all, is actually your ability to see. That's right. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Faith is what causes you and enables you to see life the way God wants you to see it. If all you see is what you see, then you still have yet to see all of what God wants you to see. <laughs> y'all ain't feeling me. Boy, y'all making this hard this morning. So the you're going to shout with me in a minute? All right. Because I need some. I need a shout. Look at Look at <laughs> Look, look, look. He said, he believed the God, Sister Beck, who raises the dead or gives life to the dead. He calls things that be not as though they actually are. Faith, y'all, real faith operates as if you have the thing in reality. So as I gave you the illustration of the patron and the client, the client believes all of what the patron says he give and his faith is as good as the very thing he promised him. That's it. That's it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Watch him. What, what else is What else? Who in hope believe against hope. Who, had, who in hope he believed against hope. In other words, Abraham's situation contradicted why he should have hope in God. That's right. That's right. Do y'all, y'all? Okay, I bring it to where you are. Everybody in here, either you have been or you are in a situation that contradicts why you ought to stay faithful to the Lord. Amen. That's it. Amen. Amen. That's it. Everybody in here, it, it might be your health sickness, a health crisis. It contradicts why you ought to still believe in God. Amen. You've got children problems. It contradicts 
why you ought to stay faithful to God. Y'all follow? You got marital situations going on. It contradicts every adversity you face will face will contradict why you ought to have hope against hope. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Ooh, watch it, watch it. What else? To the end that he might become a father of many nations. Yeah. According to that which he has been spoken. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, so, so he says, listen, Abraham, well, there's something else he says in there about yeah, Abraham. Abraham says, so, so, so shall thy seed be. Yeah. And without being weakened in the faith. Wait, wait, wait. So now, without being weak in faith, he considered his own body. He looked at his own circumstances. As good as dead. Yes. He looked at it. God said, son, Abraham, you're going to have a son. Uh-huh. When you going to do it? When, when you going to tell him this, God? When he's 75 years old. Yeah. When is he going to have this child? When he's 100 years old. Right. Which means he's going to have to wait. God, are you telling me he's going to have to wait? God will perhaps say yes another 25 years. Yeah. And by waiting another 25 years, he says, Abraham's faith never wavered. Never wavered. That's it. Are y'all seeing this thing, man? What else? What else, Sid? And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered his life, his body as dead, Sarah's womb as dead. Uh -huh. Yeah, looking into the promise of God. Yeah, there it is. Wait, wait, not. wait, 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 wait. So he looked, he considered his situation. Yep. Dead. He considered his wife's womb dead. dead. And then he put it against what God promised, and his faith stayed strong. Are you, I, no matter you tell me, you name the situation you're going through, put it up against what God promised. You name the trials you're going through, put it up against what God promised. You name the calamity that you suffered, put that bad boy up against what God promised, and I guarantee you, it'll cement your faith. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Whoa, he said, that's good. See, we better get back to Hebrews. So people think we're preaching out of Romans, man. Look, look, look. He said, he said, so the faith is our foundation. It's the substance. It's the assurance of things hoped for. It's the evidence or the conviction of things not seen. Watch verse 2 now. Now we'll get to the function of faith. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared. I'm sorry. For by it, men of old gained approval. In other words, God, the, those, those who we'll see in, uh, later on in the chapter, uh, Hebrews 11, who walk by faith, he says they all gained approval by God because of their faith. Mm -hmm. Watch this though. He says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that, here it is, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Amen. Now, here's what he means by that. And get Romans chapter 1, Sid, and we're going to get ready to land this plane. What he's saying is, when you look at creation, you, you can know just by creation, just by creation, there is a God. <coughs> That's what he's saying. Because the things that were created, the things you see, what the Christian does is they look at what they see, but they look beyond what they see and they recognize and they acknowledge that there was somebody greater who created what I see. You tracking what I'm saying? So he says, this world, you can know by the power of God's creation that someone else had to create what you see. That's right. This world we live in. Now Romans chapter 1 said, verse 17 I think it is. We'll start in verse 17. Well I think verse 20 is what I want. But verse 17. Well therein is revealed the righteousness of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From faith from unto faith, faith. From faith to faith. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed how? Faith unto faith. By faith, by faith. Why? As it is written. The just shall do what? But the righteousness shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith. Keep reading. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. All right. So the, for the wrath of God is revealed in, in heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Uh -huh. men who hinder the truth. Yeah. In unrighteousness. Yeah. Because that 
which is known of God. Oh, so that, that manifests. Wait, 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 Sid. So that which is known of God, God has been what? Manifested. In manifested God. how? For God manifested it unto, uh, unto them. Uh-huh, keep going. For the invisible things of him seen since the creation of the world. Yeah. Are clearly seen, <laughs> being perceived yeah. through the things that are made, even His everlasting power and divinity, that they may be excused, they may be excused without, excuse. without excuse. In other words, no atheist on earth will be able to ever say in the land, when Jesus comes again, there was no God. Right. Right. Because all you, what Paul is saying, if you look. At what's created, it comes out of a God who created what you see out of nothing. He says, God took the world and created a world, created a universe, put animals in it, put leaves, trees, or water. Everything you see in its created order was created out of nothing. Out of nothing. And he says, and you can know God did it. That's right. He says, now, that's who you put faith in. Mm -hmm. Are y'all seeing this? Right. Now, what we'll do, this was just a precursor, y'all, to get you for the series, get you ready for the series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we just wanted to look at these because we hadn't gotten the uh, without faith, it's impossible to please it. I wish I had time to show you. Uh, how faith functions in the man named Enoch. Mm -hmm. You remember there was a man named Enoch in Genesis? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's Genesis chapter 5. See, yeah. you remember Enoch, Enoch, uh, Enoch had a son by the name of Methuselah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Methuselah uh, lived to be 900 plus years old, right? right? But now what's interesting when he uses by faith Enoch uh, walked with God, and he was not for God took him. It simply means Enoch walked by faith in such a way that he did not experience yeah. physical death. Right, right, right. God just took him. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Woo. Well, 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 but that ain't all, Sid. So Enoch, when he had Methuselah, when Methuselah was born, mm -hmm. Enoch was 65 years old. That's right. Now, when you read Genesis 5, it was say, and Enoch, when, when Methuselah was born to Enoch, he was 65 years old. And then the next part you hear about Enoch is Enoch lived after Methuselah was born 300 years. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Which means, man, Enoch didn't have an act of faith. Enoch had a life of faith. And if you're going to be pleasing to God, you can't just have show up on Sunday and say, that's my act of faith. You've got to have faith all during the week. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He lived 300 years. He, that means he walked by faith with God as a way of life. That's it. All right, all right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at in these series, we're going to look at examples of faith. We're just going to, Enoch was one. Now, y'all made me jump ahead, but I got Enoch and out the way. But we're going to look at some of these other examples of people who live by faith so that we can be encouraged to live expected faith. It is. This church will not be able to do anything powerful for God without faith. You won't serve God without faith. You won't give without faith. You won't, you, won't, you won't worship him without faith. Everything we do in the Christian walk is by faith. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Everything is by faith. Everything. Listen, listen, listen. And so you can live by faith. It is. I think Paul will say in Romans 10, so that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing yeah, by the word of God. Right, yeah. Do you not know every time you come to worship to hear the word, you are you are some cementing your faith? Yeah. 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 That's it. Now the minute you come in here and you, you pull up video games and YouTube and Facebook, yeah. you are blocking the avenue of cementing your faith. Anytime you let your children play uh 
games and, and I do stuff on the iPad and not listen to them. I ain't talking about little babies. I'm talking about kids who, who can, can read, write, and understand. When you allow them to play in church, write notes, and do other stuff, or spend most of the worship service in the bathroom, then guess what? Don't be surprised when they get a little older or about your age and they have no faith. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You hear what I'm saying? So every time you come to worship, you ought to anticipate God work on my faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? That's it. God, what you gonna do with my yes, speak to my heart yes. so that I can have the faith like Enoch? Yes. Huh? So that I can have the faith like Noah. Yes. The faith like Abraham. Yes. Because Lord, I'm going out into this world, which is a den of, den of wolves. Yes. And I'm going out here to face some devils, yeah. be it in my community, be it on my job, sometimes even in my own house. But I, Lord, I need faith. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying to you? I need it. I need faith. Teachers going into these schools, don't you go into these schools without faith. Yeah. You hear what? I'm about to say something else. Don't go into the school without a weapon, but I don't know. I'm just, that's a joke. It's a bad joke, but it's a joke. Yeah. Listen, but you better, the weapon you had better go in there with is faith. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? You look, look, you got to move. You got to make some decisions, man, right now. You're uneasy with it. It has kept you up at night. You need to rest your faith in him whose character is unchanging. You hear what I'm saying? You, 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 you're looking at what's going on. Doctors, you got a doctor's appointment and you're afraid of the news that you might get. You just don't know what's going on. You don't know what he or she is going to say to you. You better go in there with some faith. Yeah, yeah. Faith. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go in there with some faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Faith comes by here and here by the word of God. Yeah. Believe Jesus to be the son of God. That he died, was buried, and was raised again on yeah. the third day. Oh, repent, turn, change your mind. Say, I'm going to give God my life. Yeah. Matter of fact, we always talk about living our best life. Why don't you say, God, I'm going to give you my best life. Amen. Amen. God, I'm going to give you my best life. I'm going to turn from this world, change my mind, change my thinking, change my behavior, and I'm going to come to you. And then I'm going to be baptized for the remission of sins. Watch what Jesus says in Mark 16. He that believeth faith and is shall be saved. But there ain't no point in you being baptized without faith. That's right. Yeah, faith is, is connected with that coordinating conjunction and faith and baptism. Well, you too, as a child of God, you gotta operate by faith. Mm -hmm. You gotta operate by faith. See what happens, y'all, the devil fools us into making us comfortable. And he causes us to think that because I've been coming to worship, because I've been, I've been, I've been with the Lord for a long period of time, that I really don't need to solidify my faith. And then when life hits, we knock to our knees. It takes faith. It takes faith for you to walk up here in front of all these people and say yes to Jesus. Amen. It takes faith. It takes the kind of faith that you will keep praying for your babies until they come to the Lord. It takes the kind of faith that you're going to keep praying for your enemies that they too might be saved. That takes faith, man. It takes faith that Lord, no matter what, no matter what comes my way, no matter how difficult it is, I'm going to be like Job. And Job said, I'll wait until my change comes. Isn't that right? And Job said, I'll wait until my change comes. Because I know it's coming. See, people of faith, you see the end from the beginning. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's how you operate. You see the end from the beginning. That's faith. Man. That's it. Pray, pray, faith. So listen, if you need to respond, I encourage you to come. Uh, uh, and by faith, I encourage you, if you need to give your life to the Lord, put him on in baptism, I, I would encourage you to come by faith. And watch this, as you come, you come expecting that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. What you going to do, God, forgive him of all his sins. You come by faith. 
Yeah. Right? Y'all ready? Y'all can look. Stand with me. Sing this song with me. If the world from you 